James 1. I read from verse 5. James 1. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally and unbraided not, and it shall be given to him. But let him ask in faith, not wavering. For he that wavereth is like the wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. He said, for let not that man think he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. By the special grace of God, today's message is titled, Who am I in Christ? Who am I in Christ? Shall we pray? Father, we thank you for your loving kindness and for your mercies. We bless you for bringing us to the fifth month of the year, the month of grace. Thank you because even this year you make all grace abound towards us. Even in this month we shall experience newness of grace, freshness of grace, abounding grace, overflowing grace in the name of Jesus. Lord, thank you for the ministry of your word and thank you for the power in your word. As your word is being released this morning, O oh God, let the power of your word, let the revelation of knowledge of your word distill upon us. Grant us listening ears. Let your word find a resting place in our hearts. Lord Jesus, have your way in today's service. Holy Spirit, I yield my members unto you, asking, O oh God, that you use me to glorify Jesus Christ. Thank you, Heavenly Father. For in Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. The title, Who Am I in Christ? Clearly indicates that though many of us are born again, there is a crisis of identity that is taking place in our lives. Though many of us are born again, filled with the Holy Spirit, there is a crisis of identity, who we are in Christ, that is happening in our lives. Crisis of ident identity happens to every individual. Be you a Christian or non-Christian. Many people are battling crisis of identity. Who am I? Is the question. Who am I? In this instance, who am I in Christ? And I want to define two key words. Crisis and the word identity so that I can drive home the message this morning. The word crisis is a time of danger, difficulty. A time of danger or difficulty. A time of difficulty or doubt. Doubt as to the outcome of one's endeavor doubt. That's why James said a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. A crisis situation is when a person experiences a time of stress that negatively impacts their normal functioning or relationships. When you experience a time of stress that negatively impacts on their normal functioning or relationships. For example, everyone in Nigeria today, without exception, is going through one stress or the other. Everyone. Christians, unbelievers, the rich, the poor, are going through one stress or the other. And it is negatively impacting on our normal functioning. If you are a believer that have time for deep reflection, you begin to ask yourself, is there God in all the confusion on earth? If there is God, what is God doing in all the confusion of the earth? Does God not hear prayers? You see, you begin to 
crisis make us to begin to doubt whether God exists, whether he hears prayers, whether you're a Christian, whether indeed you are actually a Christian, or whether Satan has had whispered to you that you are not a Christian. So there's a crisis of identity. It is happening right now in the life of many people. Crisis of identity. Identity means who you are knowing who you are and your personality. Knowing who you are and your personality. Identity is an all-consuming word. We use it to define how we perceive ourselves. Because as a child of God, born again, filled with the Holy Spirit, your identity is that of a Christian. You no longer take the identity of where you work, or your rank, or your position, or the identity of your town, your village, or the identity of your father or your mother. You now take up a new identity as a child of God. That is your identity. And so you don't allow anybody to sway you from this identity. You are a child of God. Now, if you agree, if you accept that this is your identity, no matter what happens outside, no matter what happens in the economy, this identity will not sway because you are fully persuaded that you are a child of God. But if you are not persuaded fully that you are a child of God, events happening today in the world, in our environment, in the economy, will begin to make you doubt if actually you are a child of God. Is somebody hearing me? And so when you begin to doubt whether you're a child of God, you run into what we call identity crisis. Identity crisis is a period of uncertainty and confusion in which a person's sense of identity becomes insecure. You become insecure. Identity crisis sets in when a believer is in doubt as to who he or she is in Christ. When you pray prayer and the prayer is not answered automatically, the thoughts begin to come in. Am I sure that I'm a Christian? The Bible says in Matthew 7, 7, ask and you shall receive. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. Seek, and you shall find. I have asked, I have not received. I have knocked, no door is open. I have been seeking, I can't find. So, immediately you find yourself in this crisis, Satan comes in to make you begin to doubt whether you're a Christian or not. But what I'm driving this morning is that you must be fully persuaded. You must have that assurance of salvation in you that you are a child of God in spite and despite any circumstance. Your identity guides the way you see yourself. Many people don't see themselves as Christians or as born again. And that is why it affects the way they dress. It affects the way they dress. Most, Christ, most sisters don't see themselves as born again Christians. And so they dress like any other person. No. You don't know who you are. If you know who you are, your moderation will be clear. Is somebody hearing me? It, it, you see, your identity also determines the company you keep. You can't keep company with unbelievers. If you do, there must be a target of bringing them to salvation. And that 
relationship must not be closely knitted. Where they now influence you rather than you influencing them. Identity, your identity determines the choices you make. Because as a child of God, hey, you want to marry? You now marry an unbeliever? You marry from another religion? You say it does not matter. You don't know who you are. If you know who you are, you are, it matters. Your identity determines the choices you make, the places you go to, even the place you walk. Do you know when we are buying shares in those days? I refused to buy the shares of MBL. Why? They will use my money to be producing lager beer. And I refused to buy. It was good. It was cheap. It was promising. The returns were high. But I refused to buy. Recently, my identity has made me to take another sharp decision. What is it? My account officer in FCMB just left and got a job in Stalin Bank and called me. Win me to move my money from FCMB to Stalin Bank. And I assured her because she's been a nice officer. I assured her I'm going to do it. But you know the, the stupid joke the MD of Stalin Bank did on Easter that Jesus Christ rose like a gege bread. I said, me cannot put my money in Stalin Bank. So I stop. Because of who? My identity as a believer. But you see, many Christians don't care. They will say, ah, ah, after what is that? The man has apologized now. You are a vagabond. You don't know who you are. And this is the problem in Christianity. This is the biggest identity crisis is the biggest challenge in Christianity. Because if you know who you are, you will defend the house of your father. You will defend the name of your father. You will defend the principles of your father. You will defend whatever your father stands for is what you stand for. You cannot go contrary to the interests of your father. But many Christians are so carefree and careless. I mean, if you have read it in the Bible, about a young man who took a woman into the tent and slept with the woman, and all Israel removed their eyes, nobody bothered. Nobody condemned what the boy did except one man, Eliezer. He just took a spare. He was angry. He took a spare and went right into the tent while the man and the woman were in, a, in the action and pierced them from the back, the two of them, to the ground. And they died. And God declared <laughs> that for what this young man has done, he has been able to stay my hand from destroying all Israel. And God said, I give him a covenant of peace. All Israel, I will say, we are vagabonds. They could not stand and defend the God of Israel, except this young man. Only this young man stood and took the bull by the horn. When you see, identity crisis is the problem. That's why you, are, you come to church, you still go to the bar and sit down and relax with your old friend and be just in talking trash. You don't know your identity. If you know your identity, you will, the Bible says, there is no fellowship between light and darkness. Fellowship. It must be arm's length. Knowing our identity is the matter. And because we don't know our identity, blessings and all the benefits elude us. 
That is where I'm ultimately going. You don't preach on blessing when the people will not be blessed. Because of not knowing who they are. You must know who you are. Genesis 1.27 tells us clearly what God had in mind when he created us. Genesis 1.27 tells us clearly what God had in mind when he created us. And so God created man in his image. And the image of God created he, them, male and female. God created me and you in his image. Now, if you are created in the image of God, hey, how do you carry yourself? How do you behave yourself? How do you behave yourself? You must behave yourself in a different way unlike other people. You dress differently. You speak differently because you are created in the image of God. God created us on purpose. With purpose and for purpose. And it is said that when the purpose of a thing is not known, abuse is inevitable. That's why we behave anyhow. You don't know why you are created. That's why Christians behave anyhow. When the purpose of a thing is not known, abuse becomes inevitable. That's why we abuse ourselves. We behave anyhow. You have a wife, daughter of Abraham, you beat her like slave. You don't know who you are. You have a husband. There are many women who abuse their husband. They abuse their husband. They abuse their children. They abuse their neighbors. Because you don't know who you are. And the matter is complicated when you are filled with the Holy Spirit. The greater one is in you with the Holy Spirit and manifesting madness. Because you don't know who you are. When purpose is not known, abuse becomes inevitable. It becomes inevitable. We are made to represent God. We are representative of Jesus Christ anywhere you are. If indeed you are born again. That is your identity. That is your identity. You represent Jesus Christ anywhere you are. Whatever you are doing, whether you are selling food, whether you are sweeping the floor, whatever you are doing anywhere, you are a representative. You carry the identity. You carry the mark of Jesus Christ. Many of us are struggling in life because of this crisis of identity. You can't really put your finger on who you are. You can't put your finger on your purpose. You can't. And so, the crisis run through our life. And when there is crisis like that, we don't achieve anything. It becomes difficult to move forward. That's why James is saying, a double-minded man. You are double-minded. Am I a Christian? Am I not? Who am I? You are just thinking about, you are so unsettled. Because of the challenges of life, you find it difficult to place where you are. Because of struggle, because of stress, you can't put your finger on who you are. And that is why Joshua told the camp, who is on the Lord's side? If you say Jesus is Lord, go this way. Who's on the Lord's side? And do you know that the entire Israel, except who? The Levites. All Israel were confused. They couldn't stand for God, they couldn't vote for God. So you can see this crisis of identity runs through the human race. And we're having the problem in the church today. Because without who we are, it affects our prayers. Because your prayer is not focused. 
a double-minded man is unstable in all his way. Let that man not think he will receive anything from the Lord. Because you are not sure if you pray, will God hear me? But if you know you are the son of your father, John 1, 12 says, as many as receive him, he gave them what? Power. To be called what? The sons of God. Let me go here. Look at what happened in Matthew 4. The devil thought that Jesus did not know who he is. And this is the way the devil plays with our mind. He thought Jesus didn't know who he is. And so he came to tempt Jesus. We are familiar with his story. He came the first time, the second time, the third time. Everything he tempted Jesus Christ is just who Jesus is. And so because Jesus knows who he is, it was easy for Jesus to dispense with the devil. You are a young sister. Somebody is trying to lure you with money. What do you tell the person? You tell him, get thee behind me, Satan. How much is the money? He said, my father owns the art. The art is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. You don't, because of momentary pleasure, deny your identity. This is what is happening today. Look at what he said to Jesus. Matthew 4. He said, when the tempter came, he commanded the Son of Man, Son of God, command that these stones be turned to be made bread. Jesus has power to do that. But must he do it? No. He created all things. There was nothing that was created that was not created by him. He created all things. <laughs> and Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, but every word has preached out of the mouth of God. Every attempt the devil made to sway Jesus out of his identity as God the Son, Jesus withstood the devil. There will be opportunities in your life the devil will want to sway you. Look at the second one. And he said, If thou be the Son of Man, cast thyself down, for it is written, He shall give his angel charge. Verse 6. He shall give his angel charge concerning you, concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest you touch your feet against the stone. Quoting Psalm 91. <laughs> and when Jesus is the word himself, that is why he must be familiar with the Bible. Because Satan can use the word of God, twist it through somebody, and you will think the person is speaking the word of God. And he's a Christian like you, and you fall for him. You lose the identity. That's why I'm familiar. This is written, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And look at it. And in verse 9, he said unto him, All these things I will give to you. If you shall do what? Bow down and worship me. Can you imagine? Today, people are selling their soul for money. For money. Joining all manner of groups, or called all manner of groups, just to make money, sell their soul. Money that you will naturally get as a child of God. Money that is part of your inheritance. Is part of your inheritance. But people sell because they don't know. Ignorance is a big problem. We must know our identity. Who you are in Christ. You must know what God created you for. You must know. Otherwise, it becomes easy for the devil. It becomes easy for the devil to tempt you. To steal your identity. To exchange identity for you. To exchange identity. All that glitters is not gold. Sister in the church, somebody came to marry her. They see, he said he owns this, he has this, he has this, he has this, he has this. I told the sister, Farah Pane, let's wait. I said, let's wait. He said, Pastor, pray. I said, no, this is not the time for prayer. Let's wait. Farah Bale. 
After three months, he came. He said, ah, what we did a useless pastor is wasting my time. You can go and marry the pastor. He got away. Recently, the sister told me that, ah, when she found out about the man, ah, he said, pastor, thank you. What she found out, she didn't tell me. But she said, pastor, thank you. All that glitters is no good. If I didn't say Farah Bale and allow her to rush in, today we will be weeping. People marry and use their spouse for money ritual. Shine your eye. You have boyfriend. He's not a Christian that you can vouch for. He's not a Christian. Cut from that person. Detach yourself. You don't know the program he has for you. You don't know the program. The world is so wicked and deep. You don't know what he has for you. Detach yourself quietly. Tell him you are no more doing. I'm encouraging you. You must be firm about it. He will tell you all the sweet things, all the good things. Each time I read this is on the internet, I pity sisters. And sisters fall prey. Yama, yama. It says that somebody gave her iPhone 12. Her head is just spin. She lost control. And the man killed her. iPhone 12. The friends are now saying that he showed he, them the iPhone 12 that the man gave her. Somebody sent money to her account. Return it to him. That is the beginning. If you know Bar, who you are, who will tempt you with money when your father owns everything, though you don't have it now? Who said you will not have it tomorrow? Who said that? Though your beginning were small, your latter end should greatly increase. Our knowing your identity, being convinced and fully persuaded that you are a believer is the key for blessing. That is the key. If you speak blessing to you tomorrow and you don't, you are not sure of who you are, it's a waste of time. Number two, Jesus. Example. Jesus wanted to know what people think about him. What is, what is people's opinion about me? In Matthew 16. He asked the disciples, what do people say I am? People, people have their various opinions about you. But the opinion of people about you is nothing. Ignore it. Forget it. Ignore it. It is the opinion of God about you that matter. God says you are the daughter of Zion. Hallelujah. You carry yourself as daughter of Zion. Anybody that shows up, you look, you size them up and tell them, go away. So I'll pray about it. Don't, don't commonize yourself. Don't commonize yourself. They said, some say you are liars, some say you are this, some say you are that, some say you are what of, you are one of the prophets. And Jesus asked them in Matthew 16, 15, who do you say I am? And do you know that among the twelve, they were still looking at Jesus. So you can see this identity crisis is all over humanity. Thank God for Peter. He said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus said, Flesh and blood has not revealed this to you. Identity, if you have a revelation of who you are, it doesn't matter what is happening around you. You will remain as constant as a northern star. You will not shift the ground. It will not move you. You will never waver. You will never falter. You will remain focused. You will remain committed. You will remain determined. You will remain steadfast. If you know who you are, rise up on your feet.